Welcome to part two of our homeschool curriculum choices for 2017-2018. So this is part two. I hope you've already seen part one. Part one was our homeschool curriculum choices for 2017, 2018, and that was focusing on daily work. Now this video is gonna be about his family work or the stuff that we do during circle time, which will include things like science and art and history. And this is the stuff that I really love, that I really look forward to, um, and that the kids as well really enjoy. So I'm really excited to share all of this with you now. So for year two Ambleside Online, they recommend Our Island Story by H. E. Marshall. This is also called An Island Story in some versions, but I think it's the same book. Um, and this is a collection of stories about British history. Um, some people have commented that they don't think it's very accurate, but I personally don't really think that matters when you're dealing with a seven-year-old. What's more important is that you're inspiring them and the stories are beautifully written. And so we'll be focusing on some of the stories from this book. Uh, the next book we'll be using is A Child's History of the World. We actually use the audiobook version of this. We've still got that, so that will be really useful to listen to, um, as well as reading directly from the book. This is written beautifully as well. The lessons are short, um, but... It covers the entire history of the world. Very nice book. Uh, and then the next book they recommend is The Little Duke. And this is part of their tales um, component. So The Little Duke, this is a story of, I believe, medieval France. And I think they're going to really enjoy this. So those are the main three books they recommend. Oh, hold on. They also recommend Joan of Arc. This book is beautiful. I've never come across this before. Um, it's the illustrations are amazing. I've not read it yet, but we'll see how it is. We briefly learned about Joan of Arc at school, but I'm going to be interested to see how this book presents the information as well. So we've got those four books for history. Now, they also recommend that you read Pilgrim's Progress. We're not going to be reading Pilgrim's Progress. Instead of Pilgrim's Progress, we're going to be using this book, The Life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by Leila Azam. And we've used this book before. You will have seen me mention this book a lot. I love it. We always come back to it. I think it's one of the best books of Sira out there for that age range, I'd say ages 5 to 10 maybe. It's very well written, it's not watered down, it's not wishy-washy, there are not too many illustrations which I think is something that Charlotte Mason would have approved of um, and it's, it's very very nicely done um, so we're going to be using that as well. Um, in addition to all of those books, we are keeping a book of the centuries. If you're not familiar with this, I'll just show you inside. Essentially what it is, it's a timeline. It's a timeline in the form of a book. So you have the dates here, and then you stick in pictures or you write something for that period in history. And so that your child gets a real sense of where um, something fits in this time scale uh, of history, really. So it goes all the way back from... Where does it go from? Here we go. Well, my son's written 7000 BC um, and then it goes up to present day. And so as we meet interesting characters, important figures in history, artists, um, anything, anybody, we will put a picture in here or um, write something in here. And so it really brings together all the disciplines that we're learning. It's not just history, but it's even scientists we can put in here. Um, and now this I got for free online. I downloaded it from somewhere, uh, simplycharlottemason.com. So you can um, get that. And the, the cover was from somewhere else. Uh, I'll try and find that and link that below if I can find it. But you can get this um, book of the centuries from simplycharlottemason.com. Um, and it's a nice alternative to having a big timeline up on your wall. And then finally, the book we're going to be using as a reference guide to our British history is The Usborn History of Britain. And as with all Aspen books, it's wonderful. The illustrations are great. It's very nicely written. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to really enjoy going through this. It's not something that we have scheduled into our timetable, but if the kids find something particularly interesting, we'll have a look in here. And we'll also use the resources in our local library. The next component of our curriculum will be literature. And Charlotte Mason believed that it's very important to expose children, even young children, to a high quality of literature and to, um, and that is how they learn grammar, vocabulary and an appreciation for well-written works. And so 
the first thing that we're going to be learning about or that we're going to be focusing on is Shakespeare. This is the beautiful stories from Shakespeare for children by E. Nesbitt and this is definitely not a wishy-washy watered down version. I've seen some um, stories of Shakespeare and they're they're not like this at all. This is going to be a challenge for them um, and we will be doing one play every four weeks and I think one play will take two weeks to get through. So this is written as a story, it's not written as a play and the language, although it is easier than Elizabethan language, it's um, still going to be a challenge for them. they recommend is Parables from Nature and this is a collection of stories that teaches good morals and good characters using nature, stories from nature. Um, and at the beginning of each chapter there is usually a quote from the Bible or a hymn, sometimes it's just a poem um, and I've had a look through and with the exception of one chapter I think this is absolutely fine for people of any faith. Um, I don't think this is something that's exclusively for Christians so I'm happy to incorporate that into my curriculum this year. Another thing that we'll be looking at later in the year is The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood. Now this book looks tough but it does come later in the year and I hope my kids are going to enjoy it. I've been on some Ambleside online um, forums and Facebook pages and people say that their kids really enjoy it. Even though it's tricky, the language is tricky, it is an enjoyable book. So I really hope that they enjoy that. Another book that we're going to be looking at for literature is The Wind in the Willows. Now my kids are already familiar with the story. We've got the audiobook in the car and they've listened to it so many times. So hopefully we should get through this quite easily. Um, and the next book they recommend is Understood Betsy. Unfortunately that hasn't arrived yet um, but we will be using that and another one that they want you to look at is Pilgrim's Progress but obviously that is for a Christian homeschooling family so we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be leaving out Pilgrim's Progress. So for the next component of the Ambleside Online they talk about natural history. So for natural history they want us to focus on the Burgess Animal Book for Children by Thornton Burgess and I love Thornton Burgess. I think his books are brilliant. The only concern I have with this book is it's very much tailored towards the American. So it's about American animals, American um, nature. And although there is some overlap in there, a lot of the, a lot of the animals are very much um, only found in the United States or North America. So we will be using this because I think the kids will still enjoy learning about different wildlife, but we will also be going back to Beatrix Potter a lot of these tales feature animals that are native to the UK um, and so we will be using so these. Charlotte Mason so and Ambersigned Online recommend that you incorporate poetry into your home and that it becomes a natural part of your schooling day. And this, what's fantastic actually about Ambleside Online is that they provide the poetry for you for free. It's all there to download and print out um, a whole term's worth, a whole year's worth actually of poetry and they do that for all the years I believe. Um, you can, they do give you recommendations if you prefer to have a physical copy of the book you can do that or you can read it straight from your computer. What I've done is I've printed it out so for the first time we will be studying the poems of Walter de la Mer and we will read one, two, three, four however many poems feels comfortable, feels natural and the kids are enjoying, we will read that every day during our circle time and each term there is a different poet that will be covered. So Charlotte Mason has probably become most famous and most recognised for nature study and what I really like about nature study is that it puts children in touch with the outdoors, it forces them to observe what's around them and appreciate nature which is so important in today's day and age, especially we live in a city, um, I really appreciate that and also it just brings a bit of peace and calm to our lives as well I found, just connecting with the outdoors. So. It's a very important thing that we're going to be doing once a week. We are going to go out and study nature. So for the, the uh, resources that we've got here, let me show you first our nature notebook. Um, this I got from, from Amazon and it's beautifully hardbound. And what I like is that it lies flat, which is very important when you're going to be drawing and painting in a book that it lies flat. The paper's nice and thick. It's not quite watercolour paper, um, but it's nice thick paper. So we've got one for each of the boys and I even bought one for myself um, and then I've bought some watercolour paints, these are by Prang, again this was from Amazon, so we've got three of them, one for each of us and then I found these in the supermarket, these are fine liners which we will use just to outline, um, outline our paintings. So we've got those and then in addition to just painting the birds we need to learn about them, so for that we've got this book 
Uh, this is the Handbook of Nature Study by Anna Botsford Comstock. This book's kind of become synonymous with nature study, particularly for those who are living in America. But in addition to that, we've got lots of Usborne Spotters guides. We've got this birds one. We've got insects. We've got all other kinds. So these are really, really nice, particularly when you're out and about. As you can see, this one's a bit battered because it's been taken out with us quite a lot. And we found this little book of woodland bird song, and you press the buttons and um, you can hear the birds sing, which is very cute. And we got this one from the library as well, a one about blackbirds. So we'll just keep going to the library and picking up what we can find there as well. Um, we've also in the car, we've got a CD of bird songs. I'll leave the link for that somewhere as well for you. Um, and I just, I love nature study. It's probably one of my fav favorite parts of the whole curriculum is nature. And you know, when you go out into nature, it's like, if you can really reflect on nature and really appreciate it, you, you it does, feel like you're connecting with God in some way or another. It is remembering God and, and that's what I really love about nature study. In addition study. to all of that, Ambleside Online also recommend that you do geography. Now my son is really into geography. He does geography for fun. So I'm not gonna force that on him in schoolwork. I'm gonna let him continue doing what he does himself. He's very self-directed with that. Um, and he reads geography books for fun. So I'm gonna let him continue. We're not gonna do a geography component this year. Um, drawing component that we've, we're doing that in nature study with this now for they also recommend that you do a music composer we won't be doing that we won't be doing hymns and we won't be doing folk song instead we will be doing nasheeds as part of our circle time every day the children will sing nasheeds and I have a few friends who who can give me good recommendations and who've been very helpful um, to recommend what sort of nasheeds we can be doing this year and when I have the final list I'm, I will share that with you. For art, for artist study and art this year there is a recommendation, Ambleside Online do recommend a certain uh, rotation, a cer some certain artists to study but honestly I had a look at their recommendations and I just didn't feel comfortable with what, what they were suggesting to do this year uh, so instead we are going to be looking at landscapes I've chosen three different artists. We're going to be looking at Hokusai. This is a Japanese artist who famously paints the mountains and volcanoes in Japan. We're going to be looking at uh, Monet and we're going to be looking at a female artist, which is nice. I think that's very important as well to teach boys particularly about great female artists. And that's O'Keefe and she's famous um, a modern artist who's famous for painting urban landscapes. So one of the books that we've got here is an artist workshop. This is Landscapes and this just goes through a few different famous um, artists and how you can recreate it at home. Now I'm probably, we, we, we won't recreate any of the paintings at home unless my children really are into it, in which case of course we will. Um, but it's not necessary. We've also got this Monet book if the kids are interested, but this is not this is not a vital part of the curriculum. What is vital is studying the paintings themselves. Now I've ordered um, some calendars. Now I found that calendars are the best way to get large size prints of works of art without breaking the bank. Um, sometimes the large books can be very expensive but if you buy calendars um, it's not too expensive. So I've bought um, calendars for Monet and Hokusai and I'm just waiting for them to arrive in the post and if you're interested in finding out more about how we do art study and picture study in our home I can make a and a video for you on that if you just leave a comment in the description box below. So once a week the children are required to do a handicraft. Handicraft is essentially a practical useful skill that they can learn so for the first term, the kids are going to be doing cooking. If you've been following me on Instagram, you'll know that the kids have already got stuck into this book. They were so excited. It's got some coriander on it. <laughs> um, so we just picked up some books from the library. Um, kids cook the world. Uh, cool stuff to bake. And cooking skills. These were not books that I particularly had looked for. They just ha We just happened to find them in the library. Um, kids cookery books. So that's the first time. The second term we're going to do, probably do cross stitch. Um, or some kind of sewing and in the summer we'll do woodwork so this book's really nice this is woodworking for kids and it's lots of n nice projects for children to do um, so we'll leave that for the summer term so the kids can do that outdoors yeah, I should say that it was very important to me to speak to my children ask them what they wanted to learn this year and one of the things that my son said that he wanted to learn about was chemistry which is shocking um, but great at the same time so we are going to be starting a 
um, chemistry program. So this is the science curriculum that I've chosen for him. I'm just showing you on the computer because I haven't had a chance to print it out, out yet, but we got it as a download. It was quite reasonably priced. It's the REAL Science Odyssey Chemistry Level 1. And um, what's really nice about this is it's perfect for younger students. It's aged, I think, grades 2 to 5. Um, and it teaches the basics of chemistry. Um, it's got poems in it, it's got little games, it's got uh, chemistry experiments. There are some sort of worksheet style uh, sheets you can see there, uh, crosswords. It's, I think it's a really nice introduction to chemistry and I think he's going to enjoy it. But like I said, because it's not a compulsory part of our Ambleside Online thing, it's just something for him to do for fun. So if one week he doesn't want to do it, that's absolutely fine. Um, this is for him, this is what he wanted, and I think it's really important when you're planning out your curriculum, think about what your children Another want to do part well. of the Ambleside Online curriculum is their free read section. Now they, they say that these are not optional, these are an important part of the curriculum, um, but they're not sort of timetabled in, they're not scheduled, and you have to find the time yourself. So we'll probably be reading these books over dinner or over lunch. Um, so here's an example of one of the books they recommend, Five Children and It, Heidi. Mary Poppins. Now I was able to find these books at the library so I haven't had to buy them which is nice because the costs of homeschooling can sometimes spiral um, but a lot of the books that Ambleside Online recommend can be found at the library or you can find them for free online. Um, I also picked up from the library The Wet Railway Children and Tom's Midnight Garden. There's a whole list of about 18 or 20 books that they recommend to show you are our Islamic Studies books. Um, my youngest son, who's five, is going to be doing year one, and for my seven-year-old, he'll be doing year three. Uh, these books are available to purchase on the website, on my website, if you're interested. So there's a textbook and a workbook, and he basically will read through a chapter every week, and will answer the questions in the workbook. The, I really like the textbook. I think it's beautifully illustrated, it's beautifully written, it's written well for his age, it's not too simplistic. Um, and I th hopefully there'll be a lot of benefit in him doing that and then the workbook that goes along with that and as you've seen from our curriculum we don't do a lot of workbooks so he actually really enjoys um, doing workbooks and doing this curriculum so year three we're doing with my seven-year-old and um, we're going to do year one with my five-year-old um, and I have done a review of the year one which I will leave in the description box Another below. Another book I forgot to mention is this The Lives of the Prophets by Leila Azam and we're going to be using this and reading from this um, regularly throughout the week as part of our character training. Now character training and habit forming is an important part of the Charlotte Mason curriculum and each term we are going to be focusing on a habit that I want to improve in the children or a character trait and we'll be reading from this book as an example of good character as well as that book I showed you previously on the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So I hope you enjoyed that and you found that useful. And look what's just come. Understood Betsy has just arrived. I've not had a chance to read through it. It looks okay, but um, I don't know how that's gonna be. So I need to read through that and check that that's suitable, but it looks fine so far. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope that you found some useful books there and things that you can use in your family. Um, like I mentioned before in part one, all the links, all the titles to all the books and resources that we've used will be on the coordinating blog post and the link to that is in the description box below. So you can literally print out that list if you want and take it to the library or you can click on them and it'll take you to Amazon, whatever you like. Um, but that's there for you to use and that's on my blog and I'll leave the link in the description box so below. Those were our choices for this coming year and I am both really, really excited and a bit apprehensive. And you know, you might be you know, shocked that I'm saying that, but you know, we haven't really gone whole hog into the Charlotte Mason thing yet. And so this is going to be a new journey for us. And I'm really excited to share that with you. I don't know how it's going to be. I don't know. Like the kids are used to sitting down and hearing me read aloud to them, but they're not used to it for this long period of time. So it is going to, there is going to be a transition period and it's going to take time for them to get used to it. But I'll share it all here. I'll let you know how we're getting on all of our struggles or any of our triumphs or any of that, you know, I want to let you know how that goes. In addition to all of that, also outside of school, um, my son goes for wrestling twice a week and he does swimming once a week. And as well, we have our nature walks almost every day. Um, he also goes for Muslim scouts and at least once or twice a week, we try and either he has friends here 
or he goes to a friend's house just to play. Um, and, you know, that is more than enough, to be honest. Um, sometimes it can be hard to juggle, you know, all the, all the activities as well as the things at home and get that right balance. And constantly, that balance is constantly shifting and constantly changing. I don't think I've ever felt completely comfortable because we're always changing things up. Um, but that's, you know, the beauty of it. Kids are constantly changing. Life is constantly changing. And so, you know, you just have to go with it and just relax into it and just just say, Alhamdulillah, it's good. We'll just do whatever, whatever happens. So if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button and subscribe to this channel. I'd love to have you here and to join our community. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next video. Bye.